Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So far, we have talked about the overall dynamics and we have talked about uh, the narrations uh, regarding the sawab and the punishment of concealing the merits of Alibat al So, in this part, let me just first recap a few things because I want to synthesize and come to a conclusion in this part. First of all, we all, uh, like Muslims, agree that Allah, the Creator, has sent Islam and Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the key source of Islam. Then there are two branches. One follow the Ahl al-Bayt al-Islam. The second branches follow everyone else. And because they are in majority, they have persecuted the Shias who have been in minority. But anyone who believes that al has the true path, it's incumbent upon them to share that the teachings as well as the merits of al salam with the world and to make an effort in the cause of al salam So what is meant by supporting? We can synthesize a few things. What is meant by supporting? Why should we support? conditions of taqayya and the implications so by supporting there could be a lot of ways that we can support we can people support through prose through poems through speeches standing for the cause of justice standing for amr bil maruf nahi al munkar standing for reformation standing against injustice even when their attributes even to the point where when we say justice, it means when their attributes are being usurped by someone else, if their titles are being taken by someone else, if their right is being justified of being taken by someone else, it's our responsibility to say no, that is wrong. Defend the Imams and the Shias if they are being disgraced in any part of the world. If they're being persecuted, it's our responsibility to help them. If they're being disgraced, persecuted is differently. If someone is being just, say it, is being winked, like on Salman al-Farisi, it was incumbent on that person to stand up, even in the absence of Salman al-Farisi, let alone people who are being killed every day. And why we should be doing it? Because the reward of the support of al al-Islam is immense. And at the same time, the punishment of supporting al al-Islam and their Shias, while there is no taqiyya, is very severe. So the, what are the conditions of taqiyya? We talked about this, Imam have outlined this very clearly. Fear upon oneself, family, children, or the ability to earn living. And, and the wealth. And secondly, do not directly deal with al Habat al-Islam and or their Shias in the presence of their enemies because of what the enemies might do to them. So if you're in presence of an enemy and you call out a Shia, you are a Shia and I respect you, we should not do that. That is the time in presence of an enemy that is taqiyya. And what are the implications of this? <clears throat> People who are living under tyrant rules are required to practice taqiyya so that they remain under they remain under the radar of the oppressive regime. They're not outlined. They're not they don't come out. Secondly, people who are not living under tyranny should not practice taqiyya under the assumption that their effort will hurt other Shias. So there are two dimensions to this. One is they should not practice taqiyya when in presence of anyone else and they hear the rights of al al-Islam being usurped. The titles being usurped. They should be very forceful on that. Second is they should not assume that by being forceful that their effort will hurt other people other Shias around the world, as long as they're not being identified individually. And the example in this is, there are many examples in this regard. Sayyidah Zainab salam, is a perfect example. She was very vocal in the court of Ibn Ziyad al-Jazid 
and or Yazid, both, but did not point to any particular Shia. She outlined her case, but did not say that, oh, you are our true follower. So that is exactly we need to do whenever the rights are served, we need to stand up. So therefore, today, the responsibilities of the Sh of Shias living, who are not living under Taqiyya, is significantly higher as compared to those who are living in Taqiyya. What do I mean by that? So the source of Islam, we know, is Ahlabayt al-Islam, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and it's Ahlabayt al-Islam. And their goal is to propagate Islam through justice for all. And that is the ultimate goal that the 12th Imam will bring. From, a Shia, from the Shia followers' perspective, there are three different types of Shia followers today. One are living in the West, who have openness. There is no thaqiyya obligatory on them. Then the second ones are living in countries like Saudi Arabia, where there's they have to observe thaqiyya because they're living under tyrants. And then there are Muslims who are living in Sunni majority countries where they don't have, they're not concerned about their life, but their rules and other things, they cannot be very open about certain things. So the responsibility of those who do not have any thakaya, who are living in free societies, if they cannot stand against the most blatant historical injustice that happened, or present-day injustice, how can we claim, those who are living in the West, that we are supporting the cause of al Salam? Therefore, we've discussed what does it mean to support the cause of al Salam, and there are a lot of actions that we can do, whether going to majalis, teaching our children, and making speeches, highlighting what happened in the past, what is wrong, conveying the message of al Salam to the broader Muslim Ummah. But it is not sufficient to call ourselves Shias and not do any of those things while we don't have taqiyya. And the opportunity that we have today, there are two dimensions of the opportunities. One is focusing on historical injustice and laying the groundwork, laying it out in front of everyone, creating the hujja so that anyone who knows cannot argue that they didn't know. What happened in the past should be brought up, cannot be ignored, because that was injustice. The rights of Ali Bayt al-Islam were usurped. And secondly, present-day injustice, whether it is happening in Yemen, whether you see it in Medina, whether you see it in different parts of the world, we need to stand up against these tyrannies. We can start this small step, one step at a time, but we need to make a voice. We need to make an effort in this path. May Allah help us in this direction. Assalamu alaikum.